everybody and welcome to what's on your mind i am your host benita and tonight we have an exciting show for you we have a really exciting guest for you tonight so i hope you guys got your drink got your favorite drink of course you know i'm going to either have my water or my coffee so i got my water tonight uh, i hope you guys have grabbed you a little snacky snacky because you know sometimes when we get started you know it's hard to let go so hope you guys got you a little snack um tonight we're continuing uh, featuring our men tonight our african-american men i uh i was talking doing a pre-interview this earlier today with our guest for Saturday show, and I was explaining to my guests that the reason that I started this particular platform was to give our men a voice. You know, so oftentimes we don't we we only hear about our African American men either when they've done something wrong or something wrong has been done to them, or we only read about them in the annals of history. It's very seldom that we actually get a chance to hear a living, breathing, uh, touchable, tangible testimony from someone who, who's gone through many heart trials and overcome many obstacles and still uh, is here to tell us their side of the story. So um, that's why, um, this platform has been deemed a safe place for African-American men to come and tell their stories, share their stories, and enlighten on, on how we can also make it through. Uh, God bless you, um, uh, Apostle Timothy. God bless you, sir. Um, and so tonight, we're I'm super excited because uh, we have something extra, extra special going on. So tonight, we are live streaming on actually three things here. And so my mom is able to watch me in Orlando, Florida on YouTube, live on YouTube uh, from her smart TV in Orlando, Florida. So I'm super super excited about that. So I'm actually watching the feedback on my TV, but I got it turned down so you guys can't hear the feedback. So, um, so hey mom, hey, hey family in Orlando, Florida, you guys watching on YouTube. Um, if you want to go over to YouTube and watch it live when you're on your smart TV or your big screen or what have you, you can go to, go to YouTube, look for Benita Bradley Ministries, and then look for our logo, um, the yellow logo that has what's on your mind. It's a yellow and red logo. Look for that. Click on that. When you click on that, click on subscribe and you'll be able to watch us live on your big screen TV, your smart TV, or if you have a real code device or a fire stick, wherever you can play YouTube, you can now watch us on the big screen. OK, so we're super excited about that. So I want to say a good evening to everybody. I hope you guys have had a really, really good day. And if you haven't, don't worry about it. Uh, tomorrow will probably be a better day for you. All right. So tonight, we're going to get right into it. You guys know I like to give a little recap of what happened on the last show, and then I'll bring you up uh, to speed on tonight. And then before we get into tonight's show, I'm going to go ahead and run my commercials for my sponsors so that we don't have to take a break and then do the commercials. So I want to go ahead and get those, get my all of my sponsors out of the way first. Okay, so we're going to do that first. So uh, the first thing I want to tell you guys is that I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we started this show, uh, we launched it June the 1st, was our first show. 
And since then, we have uh, I, my prayer is for us to just keep building and keep building and keep building our audience and our reach. And so uh, we are thankful that um, so many of you have been tuning in. My prayer is that what I need for you guys to do now, I need for you guys to start sharing, sharing the videos. I need you guys to start commenting um, because uh, we're working on something. Can I just tell you that we're working on something? So I need you guys to really start kind of getting a little bit more involved, you know, uh, sharing the videos. I need you guys to start commenting. If you're on uh, YouTube, I see we have some more than one person on YouTube. So I'm super excited about anytime you start something new, it's super exciting, you know, to see it, you know, come to fruition, Re regardless of, you know, um, you're going to have some fears, you know, you're going to have some naysayers, you're, you're going to have a whole bunch of things happening. But if you know for sure that you have heard from God and that this is what you believe you should be doing, that this is your particular assignment. This is not just a show or a podcast for me. It's a, it's an assignment, you know? Um, and so once you know you, once you feel like you really have something, you know, concrete and you really believe that this is what you're supposed to be doing, then listen, go ahead and take that leap. You don't even have to have everything. Like I need lights. I need a bigger, I, you know, a better chair. You know, you guys know I was in an ac car accident in June. So I need a better chair, you know, but you don't even have to have everything to get started. You just have to have a willing mind. You have to have faith that what I have heard is going to work. You might not even see it. And like I said, you may have some naysayers on board. But listen, as long as you can. Hey, um, brother on the other line. Hey, Patrick. So as long as you know that you have heard uh, from God and that this is what you believe you should be doing. Listen, go ahead and take that leap. Take that leap of faith and go for it with all you know. And I promise to tell you this truth, that as you keep going along and as you keep going with what you believe you're supposed to be doing, help will come. Help will come. You know, God has God is so wise, you know, he'll send you exactly what you need when you need it and how you need it. And you won't have to do a whole lot of crazy stuff, you know, to, to get the help that you need. OK. All right. And so with that, let's go now into our commercials. All right. So I, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. I'm so thankful uh, to our sponsors tonight. One of our uh, one of our biggest sponsors is amazing, amazing Lash Studios. Um, they're located here in Atlanta, in the Buckhead area of Atlanta here. Um, they gave me these gift cards to give away. The gift cards are valued at $80. You can actually go, you can get one of these gift cards and go to Amazing Lash Studios here in Atlanta, in the Buckhead area, and you can get a classic full set of lashes done. If you're on um, YouTube and if you're in the Atlanta area, you know, if you're on any of the other streams that you're watching, if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, you frequent the Buckhead area, you go shopping over there, what have you, uh, let me know and I will send you a gift card. All right. It's an $80 value. You don't pay for anything, anything extra over the $80. Now you'll, you'll pay for that. OK, but the basic service is $80. You get a full set of classic lashes, okay? Full set classic lashes, and you will be glad you did. I'm thinking about going to get some lashes done for my photo shoot. I don't know yet because, you know, I rubbed my eyes too much, so I really haven't ventured out into the lash world yet. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, all right? But at any rate, so thank you, guys. Thank you, Amazing Lash Studios. Um, they are one of my sponsors for the show, all right? So my next sponsor, we have, they have commercials. So let me go ahead and run their commercials and then we'll get right into our show. So uh, let's see, let me turn the volume up so you guys can hear his commercial. This is Mr. Vander Williams. He did this sign for me. Any of my graphics, any of my books, I have books I'm going to show you guys after I run his commercial to show you his work. Anything that does with my graphics, he has been my guy for the past four or five years. You know, he does all of my graphics for me. All right. So here is Mr. Vander Williams and his commercial. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. What's up, family? I am Vander Williams. I am the owner and operator of the 
King Scribes Writers Community, uh, and I am so glad to have an opportunity to speak with you uh, today. First of all, let me say I am so grateful for my sister, uh, Benita Bradley. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, uh, my company is the King's Scribes Writer Com Writers Community, calling all authors. If you have a book, if you have a vision, uh, if you're a poet, uh, if you have a book of recipe, you know, uh, anything that you want to get published, uh, I am the guy that you want to go to. been working with Benita for, uh, I guess, about three years now, and we've had the opportunity to publish, I think, four books together, and uh, she's just grown to be family. And so, uh, for everybody that's watching this, if you call me, you're ready to get your book done in the next 90 days, if you will contact me and you will mention what's on your mind, the What's On Your Mind podcast, I will give you a $50 discount to publish your book because you are a friend of a friend of a friend. So so listen, keep doing what you're doing, sis. God's calling on authors, calling on writers. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor, who you are, where, whatever your vision is for your book, contact me, let me know. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, Vander Williams, you can look at my page, Kings, Scribes, Writers Community. Um, and, uh, so, and I'd be glad to help you take your book from vision to reality. Until then, until I speak with you, have a blessed one. Amen. Again, that is Mr. Vander Williams. He is one of mine. Um, we did all four of these books together. He did all the book covers for me. So if you need a book done, you know, you mentioned the show and he'll give you $50 off of the work that you need done. Okay. He'll help you take your book um, from vision to reality. These are all of my books. They're available on amazon.com. Uh, the first two that I'm showing you, they're also available on your Kindle. You can actually download them immediately and have them on your Kindle device or wherever you get your reading material uh, electronically. OK, and my fourth book, all of these books are, again, available on Amazon dot com or you can go to our web store at Benita Bradley Ministries dot org and order your books. You'll get an autographed copy. However, they do not come autographed from Amazon. OK. So thank you, Vander, for all of your hard work and thank you for capturing my vision always. Again, he did the he did this banner for me back here. If you go to any of my social media pages and any of the work that you see that's that's graphics, we're dealing with graphics, Vander Williams is the guy you want to see to get your work done, okay? Because he does all of my work. All right. So again, thank you, Vander, for being a supporter. Our next sponsor is Joy. I'm sorry. Hold on, Joy. Joy always start talking before I tell her to. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. Wait, Joy. Can you guys see that? Thank you, Joy. That's J O I Gilchrist. You can find her on Facebook and on Instagram. Follow her at Jazzy J's Jewelry 
chest. You guys know I always have to slow down to say that because that's quite a tongue twister. If you try to say it five times fast, I bet you can't. She is, again, Jazzy J's Jewelry Chest. Find her on Facebook and on uh, Instagram. Now, this is mine. This is not for a giveaway. I'm just not wearing any jewelry tonight. Um, but this is one of my absolute favorite, favorite um, ensembles that I did get from her. This does come from her collection. Um, if you can see, I have the necklace, two different sets of earrings, and the bracelet that goes with it. So if you guys like this, um, see Joy. Again, it's J-O-I, Ucrest, or you can find her at Jazzy J's Jewelry Chest. She has a, a live show where she does. You can order your jewelry right online. She does PayPal. And you, she'll send it right to your home address. You can just sit in the comfort of your home and do your shopping online with her. All right. Thank you again, Joy. Uh, thank you, Vander. And thank you, Amazing Lash Studios here in Atlanta in the Buckhead area. All right. So don't forget, if you're ever in, the, in this area, let me know. And um, I still have a few left. So let me know and I'll get you hooked up with some lashes. All right. All right. So. Yeah, he does your yeah, he does your books too. Uh uh Patrick. Yeah, he sure does. He's he's an excellent, excellent guy. He captures all of my visions just right. You know, times when we there's times when we have to go back and forth. He'll do I don't like that. He'll he'll shoot something back at me. You know, I was like, that's it, you know. So we've been working together now about four or five years. So and I'm always pleased with the work that he does. All right. So for tonight's show, guys, we have and on air personality. He has the number one. Uh, if you guys tuned in uh, yesterday morning, uh, I was on his show. He has the number one gospel show in all of San Antonio. He is uh, the on air personality of 1480, host of the Anointed Morning Cuff. The, the anointed coffee morning show. Um, he has a uh, phenomenal testimony tonight. Uh, we're going to see how much he's going to share with us. I'm just going to kind of give him the flow. You guys know how we do our interviews. I just let you guys flow. I let my guests flow and we interject questions here and there. But for the most part, we're going to talk to him tonight about going from prison to the pulpit and now life beyond the pulpit. I think so many times when when preachers are no longer inside the pulpit on a regular basis, I think a lot of times people think, well, they're no longer preachers or they're no longer ministers or they're no longer called or they're no longer you know, relevant or what have you. But that is not the case. Ministry stretches far beyond the four walls. Ministry stretches far beyond the, you know, the pulpit or the sacred desk or whatever you're calling it these days. Ministry starts wherever you are, you're capable of doing ministry wherever you are. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, in a church behind a pulpit or what have you in a pulpit behind the sacred desk or what have you with a microphone in your hand, just wherever you are, you have the capacity and you have the opportunities to do ministry because you are ministry. Ministry is in you. All right. And so tonight we're going to be talking to uh, Mr. Dre Coop. Um, I've had such a wonderful time getting to know him. He has a phenomenal story. And so he's actually on the line and we're going to bring him in with us now. Now, the guy, you guys that are on the other streaming uh, devices, you can't see him, but you will be able to hear him. All right. All right. So let's bring him in now. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Where are you? All right, Dre, I'm looking for you. Where are you? Let's see. Um.
Hold on, guys. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to bring him on. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think this is how you do it. Dre, are you still here? Uh, are you still here? Uh, let's see. Um, that is how I did it last time. Uh, let's see. Let's see how you bring him in. All right, you guys, bear with me. I'm trying to see how to bring him in. All right, well, let's see if I can. All right, Dre, let me know if you're still here. I'm trying to figure out how to bring you in. Um, uh, I think somebody said I'm supposed to click on your name. All right, I'll wait and see if he's still here. If you're still here, let me know. I'm trying to bring you in, but I don't see you. Is that you? Oh, there you are. All right, I think I got them, guys. So again, I hope everybody had a really, really good day. And it says it's adding him now. So we are waiting for Mr. Dre Coop to come on. Again, he is the on-air personality with the number one gospel show in San Antonio, Texas on 1480. He is the host of the Anointed Coffee Morning Show. Um, this is adding you. This is adding him, so oh, let's see. Let's try it again. Oh, there he goes. Let's see what happens now. That's the thing about being live. You never know what's going to happen. So, um, it says it's adding him. So I, I don't know what's going on, but at any rate, um, I don't know what just happened. Let's see. I think. 
think it kicked us all the way out, guys. Let's see what's happening with this. So you guys may have to go out and come back in. So I think it kicked us all the way out. Yeah. All right, so we're back now. It kicked us all the way out. So you guys come on back in. That's the thing again about going live. There he is. Let me grab him now. Let's see, where are you? Uh, Dre is not letting me add you for some reason. I see you, and I'm trying to grab you, but I can't. It's, it's not allowing me to. So apparently, we are having technical difficulties. I see him, but it's not letting me add him for some reason. Uh. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to, if he's doing something at the same time I'm doing, but I see him, but it's not letting me add him. Uh, it's not letting me grab you on. I see you, I see you, Dre, but for some reason, it's not letting me bring you on. Um, hold on for a sec. If you're doing something on your end, just sit still for a minute. Let me see if I can. Okay, I see you. I'm approving you. I add you, and then it says no answer from your end. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do this. Um, since it will not let me bring you in, let's try it again. It's not letting me bring you in. You can call in and we can do the interview over the phone because it's not letting me bring you in for whatever reason. I can't bring you in. Um, okay, there you go. I'm hitting approved. Then I hit add. It keeps saying no answer from your end. Obviously, see, I can add them. At any point. I don't know. All right. So here's the number to call in 605 313 5826. 605 313 5826. And the code is 732492. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on.
All right, if I can't bring you in, I can get you on the line. This has never happened before. All right, so Dre, if you're still watching, the call-in number is 605-313-5826, 605-313-5826, and the code is 732-492. That's the thing about going live. You never know what might happen. Um, but anyway, what we're going to talk about tonight um, is ministry beyond the pulpit. We're going to talk about um, sometimes there are pastors without a pulpit. And we're gonna talk about that tonight, okay? So I wrote down some questions and we're gonna just go ahead and get into it. Hopefully uh, something will change uh, where he can come on on. But right now I don't see how he can get in unless he calls in. I have the line open for you to call in, Dre. Again, the number is 605-313-5826, and the code is 732-492 if you want to call in, all right? All right. So anyhow, what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, ministry beyond the pulpit, and we're going to talk about, um, let me turn this down. All right, we'll leave that in there in case he calls in. So we're going to talk about ministry beyond the pulpit. A lot of times people, like I said earlier, it's hard for a lot of, a lot of um, preachers to adjust or adapt or readjust themselves once they're no longer in the pulpit. And so that's what we want to talk about tonight. And if there's anybody that's watching um, and you're on the live and you are in that position and you want to call in or you want to come on live and talk to us, um, let me know. I'm in the comments with you guys so I can see. Um, just say, Hey, I want to come on and I'll buzz you guys in for whatever reason. Um, it's not allowing me to buzz him on, um, like I did the other guests. So, um, hopefully we can get him, uh, to come back because his story, let me tell you guys something. His story is incredible, incredible. I've been speaking with him on and off. Um, all week long, and I really wanted you guys to um, hear his testimony, hear his story, and hear um, um, how uh, God is using him now, okay? I really wanted you guys to hear that, but nevertheless, um, show must go on. For some reason, we can't get him on, so anyhow, so we can... Hello? So tonight, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about uh, life beyond the pulpit. Myself, I was one uh, that I had a church. And then, of course, when I was diagnosed with brain tumors and things of that nature uh, and moved back to Atlanta to get the specialties that I needed. I closed my church in Warner Robins and moved back here to Atlanta. That was a really hard transition to make, you know, and a lot of times it's easy for, you know, some people to just to come out of that and go right into, you know, another church and start serving and start working or what have you. But it's really difficult sometimes to make that transition from one position particularly if you were the senior pastor from that senior pastor position to going back into uh, either a staff pastor or, you know, uh, I guess a lay pastor, if you will. So it's difficult sometimes to make that transition. And so that's what we were going to talk about tonight, uh, making that transition uh, back to uh, making that transition to get back into what you're called to do without kind of, you know, losing yourself. And um, 
There you are. Hello. That's the thing about doing live. All right, guys. He is here. Oh, I, I must, and I just turned it out. So he is here now, and uh, so you guys say hello to to Dre Coop again. He is the on air personality with the number one gospel show in all of San Antonio, Texas, on 1480. He is the host of the Anointed Coffee Morning Show. Everybody, welcome Dre Coop to the show. Dre, how are you? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So is it is it hot enough there in Texas for you? Oh man, I'm good. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. So I'm gonna stay my non-special self right here because um uh, I understand that heat can get pretty rough in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, how was your day today? Everything went okay for you today? Uh huh. I didn't think it was, but everybody else. Oh. All right. So how did that go? So you were talking about how about women pastors on your show today. How did that go over? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, are you finding that are you finding that people are, are still having some issues with women pastors or women preachers? Is it preaching or them pastoring? He was, he was, a, he was, a, he, so he's against women preachers and pastors. Right. Oh, so now he wants to he wants to sit down and talk to you about it. <laughs> I, listen, I hope he's ready for that conversation. <laughs> I hope he's ready for that one. <laughs> so Dre. So let's let's get into your story. Let's talk a little bit about you because we have been waiting so patiently for you. And I really want the people to hear your story um, as much as you are willing to share and as much as you're comfortable sharing. Um, I did tell the people you are an on-air personality. You do have the number one gospel show in San Antonio. Um, shout out to you yesterday uh, when I was on your show. We had an excellent time on your show yesterday. Um, that was actually my first time doing my um who was that guy we was listening to? That that guy that says yeah, who was he? The mute the the guy the um is it uh what's his name? He's a rapper. You know the one you had me saying, yeah. Little John, okay, okay, Little John, yeah. So, um, I've been practicing my yell for you, so I'm gonna do that for you a little later on in the show, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk about um, you being in ministry. Let's talk about your call to preach. When did you first know you were called to preach? When you were in prison, okay, and so be before prison, had you had any notion that you were called to preach? Had you ever had a desire to preach before that? I can't say I had the desire. I cannot say that I had the desire. But when I was seventeen, uh huh, uh, the gentleman approached me after we had a 
state conference. Mm-hmm. And the state conference, man, it's, it's, we call it spontaneous. I don't know what that word is speaking. We had to really sit from ahead, two minutes to think about it, and five minutes to talk about it. Mm-hmm. That drinking what age was eighteen. So you was looking forward to turn eighteen. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Uh, and I was at a five year sabbatical on my studies. Yeah. And this time I said, okay, yes, Lord. And upon my return home, uh, I talked to my pastor. He spoke to me in the church. That would have been a call in my life. Mm hmm. So let let's go back to when you first started preaching. You actually started. You say you got your call while you was actually in prison. Right. Okay. And you. Go, go ahead. I said laying on my mat. Okay, laying on your mat in prison. Well, you had actually got it earlier when you was like seventeen, but you decided that's not what you want to do anymore after you did it at one time at 17. So you was like, nah, I got other plans. You know, it's some other stuff out there I want to do. So, you know, God, I'm going to holler at you later. That's what you thought. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So what happened was, you find yourself in this position. You're in prison now. And now you're in this place where you don't have a choice but to be still and hear from God. You know, now God has your attention. So do you want to talk about what you went to prison for? Um, I was mostly Uh, what they call sexual assault. Okay. And even to the point, the judge say, I don't know how they found you guilty. Mm-hmm. But they found me guilty. And the question 
having the truth in the jury, because if we don't have the evidence, can you find the proof? And then the jury said yes. So I wasn't innocent before, uh, I was innocent until proven guilty. I was guilty until proven innocent. Right. But still, they didn't prove it well. They just had proof and I said, yeah, he, he, he guilty. So they, they found you guilty with absolutely no evidence against you. Um, you said sexual assault, no DNA evidence. They did they do DNA evidence? Uh huh. So they didn't they didn't allow any evidence that would have exonerated you. They didn't allow any of that evidence into the actual court hearing. Wow. So did you have a, a paid attorney or a public defender? OK. So your attorney called no witnesses to cooperate your story, to be a character witness is, to say, you know, he didn't call any of the doctors in. Wow. sometimes because the, the old those old older saints can see stuff that we can't really see you know what i'm saying and like you said yeah. by you not having um been in that situation before you were probably thinking well okay i know i'm not guilty and i know if they do any of the testing it's going to show that i'm not guilty um my attorney's going to do his job or what have you i have people willing to come and be character witnesses or what have you on my behalf. So you probably were thinking like like you already saw this kind of play out in your mind, but in your mind, the way you saw it play out is not the way it actually turned out. Because you probably thought, so we just gonna go through this process. They're gonna find me not guilty. 
in your wildest imagination, Dre. In in your wildest imagination, did you ever did you ever think they would find you guilty? Right. It sounds like he just didn't do his job at all, you know? Sounds like he didn't do his job. So at the point that you knew or you kind of felt like, wait a minute, this is not going the way I thought it would go. You know, something is happening. Something is shifting, but it's shifting away from my favor. What point were you at when that started happening? Yeah. You know, family you know, jail away from the court. And we went to eat at Bill Miller's. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I, along with my son, we got we went to take just a short walk. Mm -hmm. And uh the jury called my attorney for something and he ran to me, bro. He didn't run a bro and a good bro. Somehow by the time he got to me, they said that's okay. Uh, I, I don't even remember what they wanted. And I was just like, something just don't feel right. Right. Sure enough, I got in there and that was their response. That was their verdict. And the judge looked at me, and I believe he put this on record, but I have to go back to my records and check. Okay. But he said, I don't know how they found you guilty. Then he looked at my attorney, and I know he put this on record, so that has to be on record, too. I know he put this on record and said, you better tell him everything he needs to know to get an appeal. I didn't see that attorney again. Really? Until, really, until my mom had gotten another attorney, and she subpoenaed him. Okay. And he knows that. What? He did not know. What? Oh, Lord. He, he gets up on the stand and say, I've never done, I've never gone to trial. I oh. said, man, that ain't what you had me to believe. Right. He would have said, you're telling me that you got a guy off who shot a cop in the head. Right. So you you knew at that point what was getting ready to happen. Yeah, I was already in by then. Yeah. I, I was already in by the time he did that. But when he got into the final arguments, yeah. this is really what I lost. He said something about we used to be able to uh He said we used to be able to buy nickel candy. <laughs> what was he talking about? Who said that? Okay. <laughs> right. So at that point, when they when you heard them say guilty, how did you feel then? My, my heart, it just, it 
was just a good, to be honest. I, it was kind of like watching a television show. Yeah. And, and I wasn't really in there at the moment. It, it, it just wasn't me. Yeah. So then I felt the breath of this. Yeah. Y'all got it wrong. Right. Got it wrong. Right. And that's when the third said, I don't know how, I really don't know how they do this. And it just didn't dawn on me until recently that those were the questions asked. Yeah. If we don't have the evidence, can you find him guilty? Those are her words, verbatim. Like if you don't have evidence, what we're doing in trial, right? But she apparently did research. She did what I did. She did research on my attorney, and that idiot called her, trying to invite her to lunch so they can sit down and talk about it. She what? Said, we're going to trial today. Yeah, I'm so mad as I'm, I'm. My wife and I were sitting down. In front of his desk, and we're getting ready to go get something to eat after we finish with him. And in fact, I tried to pick him, and he was like, Oh, you know, let's just take our time with that, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, Okay. And, um, but that is, I couldn't even, I don't think, I didn't think that's his name. That would even have me to remember that man's name. Yeah. Yeah. So, we. So did you did you immediately did they sentence you the same day they found you guilty? Not the same day, but not long after. Okay. Except because of the way the attorney had you to sign the papers, he said if I if I could, I would not give you anything. If I could, you would go on probation. Yeah. So how has that particular incident um, impacted your life? How has it changed your life? It really taught me to lean on God. Okay. And I would tell you why. Mm-hmm. Uh, first understand that when I read guilty and then I was in there, I had to You almost start using the term that you hate God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're saying you can be a you can be a big fish in the world in a big pond and a, uh, a big fish in a small pond in the world, but when you're in prison, you're gonna always be the little fish. And you didn't you didn't understand the difference. Yeah. But I would sit, I would sit in the Bible study at a distance. I would be in it, but as far away from the teacher as I could be, that's what I was doing. 
Right. Right. That is powerful. My goodness. Right, right, right. Right, because you really don't even want to talk to them, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. Yes. So that's what I learned to leave, even without understanding. That's good, Dre. I learned that I can go to God, still angry. I learned that I can go to God, still in doubt. I learned that I can go to God, just who I am. Because I did not appreciate it. So it gave me a better appreciation of leaving on him. Right. It was it at that where well, you let me recap for for our other viewers. So here you are, you were found, you were found guilty of sexual assault, and you were sentenced wrongfully uh to five years in prison. The whole time you're praying, you're asking God, God, you know, like where are you? Are you gonna intervene? And so when they find you guilty, um now you find yourself. You're sentenced to five years in prison. Uh, even the judge was asking, you know, I don't even know how they found you guilty because really there's no evidence against you. They they did. You say they did no DNA testing. They did none of that. They had no real cooperating witnesses. 
you know, they didn't call any uh, witnesses in, in in for the defense to come in on your behalf, but yet they were able to uh, find you guilty and not only find you guilty, but also give you five years. And then on top of that, here you are, you're asking God, you're talking to him and he is absolutely uh, in your mind. He's silent. He's removed from you. And this is him that's allowing this to happen to you. So now you find yourself in prison and now you're angry with God. So you're in this Bible study in prison, but you don't want to be close up and personal because you just, you kind of you want to you want to hear about it, but you don't want to be involved with it. So while you're sitting there, you're angry with God. I'm sure you were still hurting. You know, uh, someone comes to you and say, hey, man. God told me to come ask you when you run the Bible study. Your response is, man, are you crazy? Like, who are you talking? I don't, no, I don't want to do no Bible study. I don't, you know, I can imagine in my mind, you probably I don't even like God right now, let alone want to teach somebody a Bible study. You know, I ain't even feeling him like that. Listen, I'm just here because I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And so you go back to your cell. And you have this conversation with God, you know, really, you kind of I don't know if it's a conversation or you kind of telling him, I don't want to do your Bible study for you because you didn't come through for me. So I don't want to do anything for you because you didn't do this for me. So you really kind of in this battle, you know what I'm saying? You're in this struggle with God. And then all of a sudden, God stops telling you, listen, I understand how you feel, but you still got to go through this. And here's your choices. You can go through it with me or you can go through it without me. And so it was at that point you decided, you know what? Now, I had I had called my wife. I called my wife and stated they called my son. Okay. But, uh, and I said, Listen, I know you can do this. Yeah. So even with calling your wife and your son. That's where I was in prison for that. Yeah. So did you after you came out? You think their mind was made up before the trial even started? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so their mind was pretty yeah, their mind was already made up. And 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 to me, uh I would, you know, and I know you didn't know at the time and apparently you had an, an attorney that, you know, that was uh, ill-informed at best, you know, and just ill-equipped to handle your type of case, you know, because surely he should have argued more on your behalf. However, sometimes certain things happen in order for God to get our attention. I am, I, I do, I, I'm sorry, that had to be the thing that got your attention, but so you're sitting in prison and that's when you start, you start doing the Bible study. I don't remember Bible study, but I, I did do it that Friday, uh, probably a couple of times. And I remember uh, it's changed. Yeah. And I shot out a couple of places and, and uh, I just had to work with Yes. Because I just around. I got stable mm -hmm. in a position. It seemed like everywhere I went after my selling, seeing God for his own personal safety, I was going to Oh, okay. And uh, I mean, that was the same thing now. Because I ministered still. Okay. I, at one point, one of my families could be reading to his static guy. Mm-hmm. And believe me, I started having what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, we couldn't read. Mm-hmm. So every night, I began reading to him. Okay. And he would ask me questions, you know, concerning the scriptures. And I would give him my thoughts on the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Name. When I say the family, I'm talking about. I don't know if you ever heard of it. They call them uh, ex 
next to mommy. Yeah. And uh, there, was, there, was, there was something that went on. And I did him a favor. And believe it or not, that man ripped my mother. Ripped my mother. Said, my name is blah, 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 blah. She read the letter to me. And he said, your son saved my life twice. Wow. He got, he got me into Bible study. Right. But not only did he save my physical life, he saved my spiritual life. Wow. To tell him that I asked about him and I'm praying for him. Uh huh. And I was caught up. Wow. Are you in a bad bad prison service? Am I what? Are you in a bad bad prison service? No, I'm just amazed how how strong people have to be to go through that and to come out and not be bitter and angry. You know, I'm just always. I came out bitter. I came out bitter. You did. God is working with me all this time. I went five years with no fights. Good. Six weeks before I got ready to come home, I was ready to stand. Okay. Because okay. I was reaching for the bed. And he made it drop. Didn't even touch the bed. Wow. All right. For six weeks. That's what he was telling me. Yeah. Six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You're almost home. Yeah. Almost home. Never had a fight. Not one should. Not one push. Not one swing. Not one attack. Not, I mean, nothing. So do you see how God had his hand on you still? So even though you felt like God was allowing things to happen, do you see how he had his hand on you still? God was doing some wonderful things. I can't lie. I yeah. mean, first of all, when I'm watching even some of the people that I've been with and Sally Smith yeah. having to go get to fight fights, you know, people coming in the cell to attack them. Uh-huh. Nobody ever approached myself. Right, 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 right. And, uh, uh, and again, not even uh, like the sexual assault attacks. That yeah. Uh, yeah, God had his hand on you. Yeah. He meant it. I said, I said, I want you on my side. Yes. And he stayed on my side all of those years. Yes. I was never home. I was never in a deep for anything. I mean, what was that? So, I, I appreciate uh, that he was God. He allowed me to give me strength to minister to anyone else that was going through. People, brothers, were not writing them. The families are giving up on them. Mm. I know he was hurt. Right. So, my mother worked on that 
Got all about them. What do you mean by that? In prison? In prison? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you got out, did you, when you got out, did you automatically start preaching in a church when you got out? Remember how the church? Do you remember how the church received you once you came back from prison? Do you remember how they received you? I really believe it was mixed. Emotions. It was mixed. Okay. Yeah. Y'all had a big church? Y'all had a big church? Okay. Okay. 
people outside the church. Right, you actually passed him, right. So he never gave y'all permission to go outside and outside the church and speak. So they blame you for her leaving. I mean, like this, I completely had 
Did you feel like he let you down as a as a spiritual father figure? Did you did you feel like that? Did you feel like he let you down as a spiritual father figure? No. Okay. So, so your former pastor, we, once you started your ministry, he sent somebody in to spy on you to see what you were doing. But you you knew what was going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so did that come between y'all friendship? Did that come between y'all friendship? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, how come? And so, your mother died while you. Okay. Did y'all not talk at the funeral? Mm. I said, so after he, did he try to talk to you at the funeral? Did he try to make amends with you in any kind of way or?
Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So then you started preaching in other, you know, at other places in churches. At what point did you decide, well, I don't think preaching is for me anymore? About three years ago. About three years ago. About three years ago. I, uh, I decided that, you know what, and I told him, this wasn't the pastor, my former pastor, that was my, like my first pastor. Mm-hmm. My former pastor was my second pastor. And that's why I stopped preaching. I left him, but actually, you know, I didn't have any more feelings. And it hurt his feelings. But I did leave him. You know, Okay, so they didn't want your wife to. They didn't want your wife to preach. Yeah. Right. know what that made me think about how listen to that it made me think about how people can be in church and die right in church you know what i'm saying die a slow spiritual death sitting in church you know um because they're not able to yeah that they're not able to fulfill the calling of god on their life and then you know when you do do try to um have those conversations it's always that you're trying to be more than you are, or you know, you're trying to be more than your leader, or this and the third. Versus everybody sitting down, having that come to Jesus moment, having that conversation to where we can understand what it is you're called to do. And as a leader, how can I help you do what you're called to do? You know, versus me as a leader trying to, you know, keep my thumb on you and keep you from growing because what happens is. Uh, a lot of times as leaders, we wind up smothering, you know, that life right out of people. And like you said, after a while, you, you saw her head start to be bowed down. It got harder and harder to lift those hands. So you knew something was going on internally with her, you know, that was disturbing her outward praise. Mm. 
You think he took it too personal? You think he took your leaving too personal? All around man. Now, were those positions that you were doing, were they paid positions? So when you yeah, so when you decided to leave, and so do you think leaving the church also was the same time you decided you didn't want to go hand in hand? I said when you. When you left the church, do you think was that the same time you decided you didn't want to preach anymore? Did those two things go hand in hand? Pretty much. I, I, I didn't decide at that time that hey, I don't want to preach anymore. Okay. Uh, I don't feel like on a sabbatical. Yeah. I don't feel like going to the church. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Say that wasn't that wasn't your thing.
Right. Right. Uh-huh. And asked me to come and be a speaker. In fact, I was a guest speaker that one Sunday, and I was the uh, evangelist for which three babies in the room at a, at a conference that we had. I was like, wow, well, they can see a great reason why my pastor told me one reason I think that he chose you. And he was, he was curious about you. So you're the only one. saw the humility in you versus those other guys trying to be seen. So where where are you preaching at this Sunday? Tell, tell the people where you're preaching at this Sunday. Okay. So, what time? Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, you've been so transparent. And um, let me ask you this. Do you think that looking at the difference between when you were first preaching on a regular basis and then when you stopped preaching for a while, did you did you feel that you had more freedom as from a ministry perspective once you stopped preaching? in the traditional setting? Uh, let me answer that with a yes. Okay. But even more, so, uh, God gave me a ministry. See, but the ministry that he's given me is not traditional. Okay. He gave me a ministry of reality, of transparency. Mm-hmm. Side them real quick. First time I've ever been on someone's radio station like this. Just so you know. Well, thank you. Thank you for trusting me and thank you for trusting this platform uh, to be the first time you've ever, you know, did a show or talked openly and this transparent. I certainly do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. You go to the church and do your sermons. I'm, I'm going to ask you how to feel, how often do you hear the reality in the sermons? Mm-hmm. When people are around you, when people are having sexual frustrations, when people are having financial frustrations, when people are having the thought of, I got to go get a drink and service and service and service. How often are those things addressed? Mm-hmm. Right. 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 And everything else is 
perfect fine is that drug addiction, that uh, prescription drug addiction, is it perfect fine? Right. Right. I don't know how to handle that. Right. But, but that's not being handled. Now, what about what about your uh, your late night living? Right. When you call somebody up to come on up and run for you. Right. How are you handling that? Right. That's not being dealt with. True. True. So I deal with it. Mm-hmm. You were talking about yeah. You're talking about transparency. Um, you said something when we were talking on the phone, and um, it was so so profound. I wrote it down, and I was like, I was going. I told you I was going to bring it back to your remembrance because, you know, we were talking about being transparent, and we were talking about being free to be transparent and let me drop a nugget do you remember what you said or you need me to tell you what you said I don't remember. okay tell the people i hope you get it right like you told it to me because if you if you don't tell it like you tell it to me i wrote it down it was it was just that powerful so tell the people what you told me when we were talking about the freedom of being transparent Again, sir. Those of you that are live streaming on YouTube and on the other line, here's what he said. Your free presence threatens those who are trying to get a reason not to like you. They don't even have to know you not to like you. They don't even have to know you to say, well, talk. I don't like the way you present yourself. I don't like this about you. I don't, they've never even sat down and have a five minute conversation with you, but they'll find something about you that they absolutely do not like about you. And I think like we were saying uh, on the phone, uh, a lot of times it's not it's not about who you are. It's about where you are in life. You've come to that you out with the enemy. thought He was going to hold over your head that, you know, you, you know, you can't tell on me because I tell it myself. You know, you can't hold anything. You know what I'm saying? And so when you that kind of free. Yeah. People have a problem with you. People have a problem with you. Yeah. I, I expect all kinds of Yeah. I expect all No, they're not. Right. Right. 
And I, I always say that it, it rings differently. Yeah, it rings differently when it's at your door. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it rings different when it's at your door. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I certainly. Uh, no, go ahead. Right. Let me ask you, especially your first time talking about it, you know, on air, live, like, do you, do you, are you, <laughs> how I set you up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw your video on YouTube. Tell us, uh, what is it? Why is it Y O? Is Y period O period? And the name of the song is "Go Get It." Yeah, yeah. So those of you that are watch streaming on the other lines, he has a, a video on YouTube. You find him by typing in Y period O period, and then "Go Get It," and you can find his uh, video, and I think Y-O stands for Young Overseer. Did I get it right? Yep. yep. So it's Y period, O period, go get it. It's on YouTube. Uh, go check that out when you get a chance. So, Dre, I certainly appreciate I, I like the video. I thought the video was... Yeah, yeah. You know, and I thought you was like a, um, like one of those, because you know I don't know hip hop real good. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh, he he's somebody. You know, he you know he's big time rapper. Because I I don't know I don't know hip hop. You know, but it was a real nice video, very professionally done. Um, the song is very nice. You had a lot of you know nice people on there. It was just it was good. It was well done. Which one was your pastor? Remember when they got out the cars? Yeah. And this tall man came up and hurt me? Yes, that was your pastor. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Where y'all get all them cars from? 
Oh, okay. I was like, where did he get all these cars from to be in this video? <laughs> so it, it was nice. Yeah, they did a really good job. They did a really good job. So did your studio produce the whole video? Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And how long did it take y'all to shoot all those different scenes in the video? How long did it take y'all to shoot all those different scenes? Okay. Okay. You guys did a really good job. It was a really good video. You know, it was good. It was it was very professional. I thought, you know, it was, you know, a big big time hip hop, especially when listen, especially when everybody pulled up in them cars. I was like, where they get all these cars from? What they, they got money to make this kind of video? I was like, okay. <laughs> it was really good. It was good. Oh, you do? No, you didn't tell me about the movie. Is it is it viewable? Okay. So can they can they see it? Can they view it? <laughs> okay. Is it on YouTube? Okay. Okay. All right. So if you guys want to see him in a movie, there's a trailer out called The Cleanup Woman. You can go to YouTube and type in The Cleanup Woman and see the trailer for the movie that Dre is in. All right. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Dre, I. Huh? I said, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, your show is always so lively. You so lively in the morning. You must be you must take B12 and drink three cups of coffee because you always be you be live and popping early in the morning. <laughs> so. OK, OK. OK, you're going to share. OK, I got you. I got you. I got you. And so, um, is there anything else you want to tell the people? Is there anyone, anything else you want to, anybody want to shout out to? Anything you want to say to somebody that may have gone through the things you've gone through? Any last words you want to have with them before we uh, say our goodbyes for for the evening? Sure. Uh, first of all, I Mm. 
You say you preached in this God? Okay. For seven years. Okay. Yes. Take away your know how, he takes away your want to. Uh huh. I still know how to make money on the street. Right. Right. I still know how to act before and try to run from God. Right. Right. I don't want to. That's good. Good, sir. That's good. Again, I thank you. I know this was a little tough for you, but let me tell you something. You are a champion. I thank you so much for uh, allowing us, allowing me to be the first time you ever shared your story. I thank you for this exclusive interview. And I do believe that more doors are going to open 
And because you, you have not only is your story about your court situation, but the fact that you you went so long, seven years is a long time to be angry with a God that deep down inside you love. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to love somebody and be angry with them at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And so I think uh, even more doors will open so that uh, there are a lot of preachers that are no longer in pulpits, you know, and they kind of feel the same way you felt, you know, maybe they feel like God have let them down or whatever, but now they, they're going to be able to see that, you know, there is redemption. You can always come back. You know, God is always waiting on us to come back to him. And so I, again, I thank you for trusting me with your story. Thank you for trusting this platform, you know. And Yes. Last time I left the ministry, I didn't feel like God let me down. I feel like He held me up. Mm -hmm. Even in my decision, I feel like I actually listened to God at that time when He told me, be quiet. I'm scared. You never know. Right. I think that's a good point. That's that's a good point. I'm gonna have to bring you back again so you just talk about that right there because a lot of times if you tell people, well, God told me to step down for a second, God told me to just chill for a minute, God told me to go on the sabbatical, a lot of people actually have a problem with 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 you saying, No, God won't ever tell you to stop preaching, God won't ever tell you to do this, you know. So I think I'm gonna have you back and we're gonna talk just about that part right there. All right. So again, thank you so much. Uh you have really uh, opened our eyes to a lot of stuff tonight. And so thank you again. Um, if you ever need us, you got my number. Give us a call. And uh, we just a phone call away. All right. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. All right, guys. So let's say bye bye to our guests tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for staying with us on tonight. Uh, don't forget, uh, go to our website. All of our books are there. Go to Amazon.com. Don't forget our commercials. Don't forget our sponsors uh, that sponsor the show. And don't forget, we're on again on Saturday. We have another extraordinary guest coming up on Saturday, Saturday at seven o'clock. Uh, we have an extraordinary um, uh, man coming on to tell his story. He was born uh, with cerebral palsy, had 10 surgeries, and you would not believe the things he has accomplished in his lifetime. Uh, he's gone through drugs and alcohol, and, and the Lord has really, really blessed him and he is absolutely doing phenomenal things with his life at this point. So I want you to tune in on Saturday at seven o'clock and we'll talk to another incredible man, uh, an incredible black man. And I'm so happy that all of the men are just being transparent. They're being forthcoming. I do do pre-screening uh, interviews with them. So, you know, um, uh, to validate everything that they're saying. And I'm telling you, these guys have some incredible stories. So if you have a story um, and if you want to come on a show and share your story with our audience, inbox me and let me know. And um, we'll get you on the show to share your story. And perhaps your story will change someone else's life and be an encouragement for someone else. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, doom and gloom or whatever. You could have just, you know, if you're doing something really positive and really great and you want to come on and you want to share it with our audience, hit me up in my inbox and let me know. And we'll do a pre-screen interview and we'll see about getting you on the show so you can share your story. All right. All right. So until the next time, uh, this is Benita and you have been tuned in to what's on your mind. All right. Bye bye.